It's the 25th of May 2022. I've skipped uh, 45k just in case I need to come back to the uh, European Court judgment on wind farms. And this is back into the current situation on the world with finance and all the crazy things that's going on. Now, this is 45L. I'm going to talk a little louder. This is a very quick video. And it's the biggest Ponzi scheme in history. The biggest Ponzi scheme in history. Now, one of the of the things is that insider knowledge is technically illegal everywhere, but in actual fact, there's ways around this. There's ways of finding out what's going on, what people are thinking, what decisions are about to be made by public bodies, and all that. So, um, in the run-up to the 2008 crash, I actually knew about nine months before it that there was a crash coming. And I had pinned down to about three months from when it did. And I got a call from a person who had the money in, in a bank to know what bank was actually going to collapse first. And I was stuck. I didn't have enough insider knowledge. This lady wanted to pull her money out. But uh, within a short time of that collapse, in the, in the Celtic Tiger boom, like Sean Quinn, the famous Sean Quinn, <coughs> and I have no issue with him at all, but I mention him as a very typical point because I'm meeting lorries every day on the road, Manock, which are now taking over his company. And there's an application in the courts to stop him going into his own quarry he once owned and all this crack going on. So it's a nasty, it's a horrible old thing to happen to any person to see everything you've worked for gone like that. But anyway, what happened before the economic collapse was the smart fellas with all the cash and all the money and all the shares in Anglo Irish Bank dumped them all over and he bought them. He bought them and he shouldn't have bought them for 2.8 million euros they got washing their hands of it so that's what's known as dumping getting rid of your stock based on insider knowledge very good very good um assessment of this of the market which some people can't do another man the same thing happened to more or less was brendan murtha uh, he was one of the people on in kingspan of the murtha, famous murtha family and kingspan is a very good company and actually a good company to own stocks in then they're very prudent really uh, workers i can't guarantee that but they're not bad at all but you'll pay a lot of money for stock there for shares in it but brendan wanted to go out on all this thing about telecommunications and this was nothing new i mean there was you for me years ago there was the aircom uh, float years ago not none of this worked people think because it's electricity it's great it's no different than anything else Anyway, um, he was told by Judge Peter Kelly that he'd have to get used to living on the dole. Imagine being told that. And that was because he put his money in, put money in to stocks and shares and buying out companies through, through owning the stock, when in fact others knew damn well the whole thing was a complete and utter cod. About from 2006 to 2008, the stock market, and the property market in Ireland was a Ponzi scheme. It was nothing only a Ponzi scheme. And lots of people, as I've said before, sold land and sold property. And people who had bits of land or let by their parents, maybe in the family for hundreds of years, they, they, they sold and they got millions. They got millions and millions. And they were persuaded by the banks to buy stocks and shares. And of course, what did the bank recommend? It wasn't to buy them in Kingspan or buy them in some reasonably good company, it was to buy them in their own bank. So by getting these people in to buy the shares, they were offloading their interest to the bank so that when the collapse came, the, it wouldn't be the bank would be caught, it would be these shareholders. So the, the Ponzi scheme that gave them too much for their property was the same Ponzi scheme that took it away. If they just kept their money in some other form or even on deposit in the bank, they'd have been better off. They'd have, been, they'd have been a lot better off, actually. Now, I want you to look at a video here. And it's uh, by Squawk Box. Squawk Box. And it's, uh, he's Robert, Robert Frank. And it's the 22nd of February, 2022. Now, it's American, like lots of these videos. The internet is full of them. But what I like about this one is he gives the actual amount of dumping of stock. And I'm just going to play it here for a minute now. $70 billion of their corporate stock last year. That's according to data from Smart Insider. Can you see that Sales there now? 80% over 2020. So he's on there about the amount of stock dump. Now, 
So rather than me reciting that, you know, let's look at that. Rather than me reciting that, I know there's a shadow on this. Jeff Bezos in second place at $10 billion. The Walmart no. family selling nearly $8 you, you billion dollars of Walmart stock. Mark Zuckerberg cashing so out that's with folks, a record folks. year. So he, he outlines all of them that are dumping stock and buying land and buying other things. And that's a sure sign that they know damn well that uh, something's not, not well. And yet ordinary poor innocent people, investors in pension funds, are, are stuck in these things. And you need to look at them very carefully. Now it's called the biggest Ponzi scheme in history, YouTube. It is YouTube, I think. Uh, Stock sales by corporate insiders, CEOs... Yes, it, 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 is, it, it is YouTube. And... Um, it shows the boys there rubbing their hands after getting rid of all this this stock. The whole stock market is based on Solomon versus Solomon. That if you have a company, you're not liable for his personal for the debts it makes on your personal property. And it's a huge thing. Whether it's right or wrong is another day's work, but it's there, and that's what you have to know about. A lot of people didn't understand that. A lot, a lot of people thought that if you had stock, if you had shares in a bank, you you had the same as cash in the bank. It's not the same at all. So if you're investing in any company, weigh up the company fairly well, weigh it up, and you'll find that if it's a good company, you'll pay a good lot more than one that is not good. And then there's this ethics thing where, oh, don't invest in alcohol. And then people get rid of uh, Guinness and Powers Distillery and Irish Distillers and all these, and they get rid of them because they're supposed not to be good for other people. You know, then there's don't invest in arms in arms production yet when the war is in Ukraine everyone agrees that they supply the Ukraine with weapons so who, who makes these weapons only the arms companies I mean let's be truthful about this same with tobacco advertising and all this type of thing so there's these moral issues but but uh, we were we passed laws in Ireland that the government couldn't invest in fuel and now we're having a shortage of fuel and there could be buying fuel at a premium this is the madness that goes on. You have to swim your way around all these obstacles and ignore them. Now, one of the thing is that um, a big tech, a big tech is a problem. I, I myself would dump any big tech, like Facebook, uh, what is it called now? Meta, is it? Twitter, Tesla, this old green cardology and all this stuff. Um, I'd dump them. Now, bear in mind, Elon Musk bought Twitter. And that's all right, he bought them. But now he's put it on hold. And one of the things he doesn't seem to have understood is that a whole heap of Twitter accounts are fake. So if you took a thousand Twitter accounts, I don't have one because they banned me off it. But if you take somebody who has it, who's on Twitter, on Twitter and uh, they, ha they have a genuine account, so they sign on maybe every day or every two days. So if there's an advertisement on there for something, new shoes or f some wonder, wonder face cream or, or something, uh, if there's an investment on there, you see it. Now, out of every one that's every, every hundred that sees it, maybe only two, will, one will buy the product, one or two. So if you have a thousand people on there and 10% of them see the ad and maybe 1% of them will buy the product so it's still profitable they can still sell a bit by advertising but if you have several fake accounts often known as sock accounts like sock puppets where they use them in soccer, sock, sock puppets if you have a man there and he has his own account in the name of jimmy smith and he's another account, account called robbie robbie muldoon and he has another one called uh, uh, john burke and he has all these fake accounts when he sees the advertisement it's only one sees it, even though Twitter thinks four or five sees it. And there was going to be an effort made by Twitter to weed out these fake accounts, but it's not done yet. And it's like the it's like the subprime mortgage rate. They didn't know who was prime and who was subprime because they're all bunched in together. And I think um, Elon Musk may have spotted that he was being taken for a fool. And he's going to have to negotiate down the price or whatever. I can't tell you, but it just shows you, like, what anyone that invests in Twitter, well, there could be up to thirty percent of their accounts, all the one person, all fake, in other words. So anyway, that's what I would say. I wouldn't have had to do with that in green. At all collapse, the war in Ukraine has proven them green things don't work. And notice how you haven't heard 
sight or light of Greta Thunberg since this whole thing started. Haven't heard of her. Now, another thing I don't trust is crypto. I, I just don't think they, they, they fit the bill for a, a reserve of value or a store of value. There may be one or two out of the 20 or 30 of them that will sail through and maybe prove correct, but they're not, they're not doing so well. Uh, I mean, how do you go into, into a crypto bank? You can't talk to anyone or anything else. Uh, it's highly dodgy to me. Now, I'm not saying I could be wrong, uh, but how do you know which to pick? Uh, uh, Stablecoin took a hit. Luna took a hit. Uh, it's very difficult. Now, uh, so so um, the whole financial markets are rotten, except a very, very small amount. And now you see here in Ireland, we don't even have banks. We do not even have banks. We have one or two, but they're all being decimated. And they won't take on staff permanently. Uh, staff are, are not happy to join banks because they know they'll not be able to keep their jobs. Look at all the staff who were let go in the banking in sector in Ireland in the last 15 years. Unbelievable how, how this, how Kingscourt Town had two banks. Now it is none. I mean, I mean it's just, just, just mad. And uh, so the other thing too is that voting for any politician that stands by and doesn't give anyone due warning is also bad. Um, the government is in on it. However way they're in on it, they're in on it. And these, as it says in that video, these big investors, they know what's happening, what's going to happen. If, there, if there's going to be a tax placed, it's, it's told to them. They're all contributors to the Democratic Party and they're in power in America. They're in, uh, they contribute to the parties here and in England. And there's insider everywhere. It's only how much of it there is. And uh, so, so they're not going to take into account the interests of the ordinary Joe Soap. They never did take into account their interest. They put in these billions into green energy and all this, and now we see that, that, that it's in the paper yesterday, how, how the awful amount of, in England, the wind, the, 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 the electricity bills and, and the gas bills could go up to 2,800 a year and deal with that separately. But it just shows you these people have no interest in the ordinary Joe Soap. I don't have a recipe for being rich and famous, but uh, I, at the same time, we're looking at that. The one thing you cannot do is uh, trust or put any faith in these jerks and they'll not only catch the ordinary person they'll catch people who are very wealthy and i've mentioned a few and i know i knew a few a few more who lose all and will lose all um so if i were buying stock i had stuff i tried stock and um the sales were up 80%. I, I bought a few regular companies and i left them for two years I, I, they, were, they all made made no money i, I don't know how people make money there may be the occasional one and, and, and all of that, but uh, just be aware of that. So that's the video on you. I do, I do strongly advise you have a look at it some night. Don't be looking at cook and programs, uh, old travel programs, repeats of who wants to be a millionaire, 22 years old. Are people going off the rocker every night on some channels? That's what you get. And some fellow traveling on a train. It's up. The television is gone. It's just, it's just gone, gone mad. And there's no comedy because if they mention anything, anything that might be funny, it's it not politically politically correct. Just shun all the media, shun our established parties, our government parties, and have a wee look at that and just see the peril that there is and what we could be facing down the road. How can they go on run an economy on printing money? And that's exactly what they do. And I will say this: this. I was in the marts, I go to the cattle marts buying and selling cattle and I remember when those cattle were going up in an awful way in, in the 1970s. I, I bought a pair of bullocks one time and I doubled my money uh, in a year uh, and I didn't realise at that time. The reason I doubled my money was the value of the money was going down and in the 70s there was terrible inflation. But nobody seemed to know that. I copped it later. But now, when you're in the mart and you see some big, huge price for, for an animal, there was one cow, fat cow sold in Kingsford there one day for 2,700 euros, which was never heard of. I mean, you'd be doing well a few years ago to get that for three of them. But the thing about it is that, that uh, when I spoke to people after, instead of saying it's a great price, they all realised, after it's the money that's been devalued, the money's worthless. So people are a bit smarter, but that doesn't mean that they're going to find the way out of this note too in this video they're all investing in special land in hawaii and all these places they're all getting out they know that there's no handy way of storing money with the possible exception of gold so just to see it there again have a look at that video when you get time
over 2020 and more than two and a half times you see it there. their pre-pandemic level. Just in a little bit there, the in, inside five, saying. Elon so Musk it, was, it, it know, shows Elon Musk and it shows all that in it. And uh, the biggest Ponzi scheme in history, Squawk Box is the name of it, and it was put on the internet on the 22nd of February 2022. Not too often I recommend one of these. Folks, we'll see you back soon, and let's uh, give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Thank you very much.